Hello guys, welcome to Insta Electronics. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you a simple circuit which will give you a visual indication in case if the fuse in your circuit is faulty for any reason. So the circuit is actually known as a fuse blown indicator or a blown fuse indicator, whichever name you want to call it. It's basically a circuit that makes use of the very simple component, very simple and very easy to find component, a neon bulb and a resistor for its whole operation. And that makes it very cheap as well. So the whole setup right here is actually to show you a demonstration but before that let me explain you what is happening in here. So I know there are a lot of videos already in YouTube that shows how to make a blown fuse indicator using LED bulbs and neon bulbs as well. But the problem with those videos are they are simply you know assembling the circuit and showing a demo of it and call it as done. They are not explaining what is happening here. Because you know, when a common person, when an average person looks at that, okay, now the fuse is blown. When the fuse is blown, the indicator will light up, showing that the fuse is blown. But how can that possibly happen? Because now the fuse is blown, literally, the load will not work. Yet again, there is a bulb that is lighting it magically without, you know, somehow it has to reach some current. How, how does it happen? So allow me to explain that. So all that is here. You know, I'll, I'll first show you the schematic, that, that will be the best thing to do. So ignore all these other schematics for now and this right here guys is the uh, whole setup that you're going to need. And that means if this is the fuse that is going to protect the appliance, all you're going to do is put a neon bulb and a suitable resistor in series parallel to the fuse holder like that. And that right there guys is your fuse blown indicator. Now speaking of which, let me show you the hard of operation the neon bulb and the resistor. So you can purchase these things in electronic shops and other places where they sell electronic components. The price is around 1 rupees and the resistor is you know almost salvageable from other components and if you want to purchase it, I would recommend purchasing any value that is higher than 100k but not anything above 560k or something. That will obviously bring down the brightness as well. And similarly, if you're going to put any resistor that is below 100k, the uh, brightness is going to increase so much, but the life the bulb will significantly reduce. So I don't recommend using any value below 100k if you're going to go with discrete components like this. Or else you can actually purchase one of these things. These are standard electrical fixture. You know, you can buy from electrical shops standard electrical uh, indicator bulbs, neon indicator bulbs that are usually mounted in the screw like uh, switch panels and other places these are commonly available for around 25 rupees or something based on the brand and model and other things uh, one thing you have to make sure is that these are actually using the neon bulbs inside because nowadays these are also moving over the LED bulb category the whole thing the whole circuit can actually be built using LED bulbs as well as we have probably seen in other videos but I shall explain about that in a different video in today's episode I shall first show you what the circuit looks like, how the whole thing works, where you can use it and where not to use it and basically you know the drawbacks of the circuits as well because those are the things that other channels are missing out. The circuit will be similar, the operation will be similar, everything else will be similar but they are not explaining it. So let me do it for you. So first let me show you how the circuit works. So ignore these two circuits for right now and this right here guys is the whole circuit. This is the load. This is a fuse that you are putting in series with the load. It's a typical circuit, you know, without the neon bulb in parallel. This is the typical circuit of how you put a, a fuse in a, in a load that you want to protect. So for a fuse blown indicator, all you're going to do is put a neon bulb with a resistor in parallel to the fuse. And that's it guys. So that's what I said. All you're going to do is put a neon bulb in parallel to the fuse like that. And that's it. So if you're going to use it in a panel mode or something, you can get these kind of reflectors with the screw caps so that you can thread it onto some panel works as well so to get a much, uh, you know, better view. So let me tell you where you can use it. This circuit can actually be used where you don't have physical access to the fuse, yet you want to know the status of the fuse. Or say for example, if you have a lot of fuses in parallel, you know in a, in a box or something and you want to if you don't want to unscrew each fuse one by one to know which one has blown you can make use of this circuit or the fuse is not in a convenient position that you have that you don't have direct access 
build one of these and put it in a convenient position so that remotely you can come to know the status of the fuse without even directly you know being in the in the proximity of the fuse itself so those are some example application that we can use the circuit and let me remind you one thing that the whole circuit is not standardized by any authorities like IEEE or anything so if you are making this thing it's only up to uh, you know you are making it at your own risk this is not approved by any agencies or standardized authorities as a, as a standard way to identify the status of fuse just because it has its own limitation this is just a DIY method to know the status okay so if you are following do it at your own risk this is an effective way of uh, knowing the status in a, in a you know, less critical application but in a critical application like in a case of medical equipment or something this is not the proper way to do it and I don't recommend doing it in that situations either so let me show you what this whole thing looks like in a circuit way so this thing guys is what you're seeing over here it's basically the same thing with some attachments connected to it so let me just focus on that so this is the load and as a load here I'm using a light bulb a normal light bulb which is a 40 watts and across that there is a voltmeter which is this one so it's basically measuring the voltage across the load so this meter measures the voltage across this bulb and in series to the load is a fuse so that is this thing right here this bulb goes from the load comes here through the fuse to the other path it finds the neutral so that is that fuse to the neutral Parallel to the fuse is a new indicator bulb, which is this one. parallel to the fuse. And parallel to both of that, I have connected the multimeter, which is this one over here. So, using the whole setup, we can simulate a faulty fuse and a fully working fuse. So first, let me show you how a perfectly working fuse will behave in the circuit. So I'm going to turn on this meter. Right now, it's measuring zero because there is no power being applied to the whole circuit. And this is also measuring zero because the whole circuit is not being powered up now we are going to simulate a perfectly working fuse and I am plugging it now and you can see the indicator bulb is off we are getting around let it settle there for some time but still somewhere around 220-230 volts across the load we are not getting any voltage across the fuse the indicator LED is off which is also showing zero so what is happening here now because the fuse is uh, fully working, it is the fuse is acting as a short circuit. So if you are trying to measure the voltage across a short circuit point, it will be zero. That is why uh, the new bulb is not lighting up. Because with zero volts, it cannot light up. It requires around 70 or 80 volts across it to even start lighting up. So let's take this circuit as an example. So now we have simulated a fully working fuse. So right now the fuse is acting like a short circuit that means it is simply acting like a piece of wire between uh, the terminals of the neon so across a short circuit the voltage will always be zero so in a perfectly working condition the voltage between here let me draw it for you guys the voltage between let's measure it let's say between here and here V equals zero so in a perfectly working condition the voltage across the neon bulb will be zero because the fuse is acting as a short circuit for the neon bulb and across a neon bulb or across a short circuit the voltage will be zero that is why this multimeter was actually reading zero when the fuse is, uh, is perfectly working because we are just basically measuring a short circuit and the short circuit voltage will always be zero so and as I said the neon bulb requires around 70 or 80 volts to start glowing and once it starts glowing the voltage can be as low as 50 or 60 volts and the current flow at that time will be regulated by this particular resistor over here so now that we have simulated a fully working fuse situation like this one so once again the fully working fuse uh, volt full voltage will be across this one because when the thing is fully working the voltage goes through the load from the line through the load through the fuse through the neutral so the whole voltage will be across the load and that's why we are getting full 220 volts across the load right now so that simulates the fully working fuse since there is nothing uh, else to show here let's move on to a short circuited fuse so for that I'm going to carefully remove the fuse from its fuse holder like that 
so now we have simulated a faulty fuse and you have you can see the voltage across the load is actually down to zero over here and over here you can see the meter is actually reading 230 volts across the neon bulb how can that possibly happen because now the fuse is blown the load is off still this is getting power how can that happen allow me to explain let's turn this whole circuit off otherwise i'll get a shock so this condition a faulty fuse condition is simulated in this schematic over here so to understand how this this thing happens like how this light turns on you need to understand first how the fuse blown in the first place so normally a fuse is designed to protect the equipment in a short circuit or basically let's say a high current is trying to flow through it so whenever there is a current flowing through the fuse which is more than the rated capacity of the fuse it's simply going to melt the terminals so when there is a short circuit in the load the load is simply going to act like a piece of wire okay so the fuse is blown because there was a short circuit in the load so the fuse is now open the current cannot flow through this path anymore and since this load is now acting as just a piece of wire it the whole voltage is going to appear across the neon bulb so basically it will look something like this line here and neutral over here holding it in my hand so so the load is you know physically still here but it is acting like a piece of wire you know and as i said already in the previous case in this case if we measure the voltage across a short circuited uh, point the voltage will be equal to zero over here but anyways you get the point right so when the load is acting as a short circuit the voltage across the load will be zero and that is why this meter was actually reading zero if you plug it right now we can see this meter that was connected across the load is reading zero so as i said this load is now acting as a piece of wire which means that if we measure across here and uh, here we will get the full uh, mains voltage at these two points because this is just like you know it, this is simply uh, an indicator connected straight to the AC mains so that is why at this point you are getting the full voltage across the uh, indicator bulb so that is the condition when we are simulating the faulty fuse let's test that once again I'm going to put in the fuse carefully you can see this meter is reading full voltage now this uh, fuse is perfectly fine indicator bulb is off voltage is zero over here I'm going to take out the fuse simulating a blown fuse or open fuse the vo load voltage is going to be zero and full voltage is going to be appearing across the neon bulb which will make it light up okay what if the short circuit was not the cause so let's come to this second or next schematic let's say the fuse was blown not because of a short circuit or best explained if you are considering you know as of now in this whole example we are using a resistive load but typically uh, it will not be the case we will be putting some kind of electronic load like say for example a home appliance a tv or amplifier or a let's say some kind of electronic load that's not going to be a purely uh, resistive load okay so in such kind of condition let's say that the uh, you know load is not a fully resistive load in such cases what will happen let's say if there was a short circuit then it will be the same story as this one that whole equipment is going to act like a short circuit but if it was not a short circuit that caused the fuse to blow up let's say for example a power spike a power surge has happened then what is going to happen is that you know electricity always finds a path to neutral like through direct conductivity or through capacitive conductivity through capacitance leakage that was the actual thing through leakage or through direct conductivity so some way or another it will actually find a way through the load okay so let's say as i said the device was fully working but a power surge actually caused the fuse to blow up in such case the load will be in perfectly working condition that simply means the electricity is going to find its way through this load to this one so it's acting like more or less a separate added resistor in series with the neon bulb so this is this will be our load 
which will act as an extra resistance. That is what it is. It will find a way through capacitive leakage or through direct connection to reach the neon bulb. So in such cases, the neon bulb will light up, you know, with much less intensity because now there is an extra resistance to uh, in the circuit that will limit the current, you know, even further. And you may be wondering whether, you know, passing that current through a faulty device. Let's say this device was faulty, and you may be thinking, okay, now uh, the device is faulty, but now the fuse is blown. That should have stopped the current flowing through the load. But now the neon bulb is present in the circuit, which is allowing the current to flow through the faulty device. Will it cause any further damage? Absolutely no, because see, now the device is acting as a short circuit. Okay, and for neon bulbs, the current that is required to light up is like in the range of milliamps, or sometimes even go it, it can go up to microamps as well. So the magnitude of current that is flowing through here is much smaller that it is not going to create any damage to the already damaged load uh, as well. That is the same in the case of a, a working load as well. So if the fuse was blown to protect the whole circuit to prevent you know further current from flowing through, we are allowing a small range of current to flow through the neon which will be in the range of milliamps or microamps that is not going to create any uh, damage to the load like in the case of a working load. It, this, it's not significant enough to create any damage, this small milliamps of current. The only issue is that the intensity here will be much lower because now it is not a short circuit, it is now a proper resistor. And this is one reason why this circuit is not a 100% reliable circuit because now in this case the intensity is actually much less which sometimes may lead to, uh, you know, if, depending on the brightness in that room in a well lit environment may not be bright enough to indicate that the fuse is actually blown which it is actually which it actually is so that is one situation where you cannot 100% rely on this simple circuit the second scenario why this cannot be 100% reliable is the most common because nowadays almost all equipment has a built-in switch inside and let's say that this is the load that has a separate switch to turn itself on or off respective of the extra switch that we placed in the outside line you know this is typical in most electronic equipments like a tv or amplifier or whatever it is it has a built-in switch turn itself on or off irrespective of the extra switch so in such cases you now have to do an extra step of turning it on to know the status of this fuse because now because of this extra switch there is no direct path for the electricity to reach the neon bulb so the indicator will stay off indicating that the fuse is working because that is what it does in a, in a perfectly working condition. So this can be fooled by just a simple switch, simple open switch in the circuit. So this is the other situation where this circuit cannot be used or cannot be used 100% reliably. At least in this case when the switch is on or when the switch is closed, if the fuse is blown, the neon indicator is going to light up and indicate the fuse is blown. It just requires an extra step that's it. That's why this is not reliable in a critical application so yeah so guys that's it that's all about the simplest fuse blown indicator circuit but it takes around 20-25 minutes to explain the whole thing because you know it's much better to explain it in the, in the right way rather than just showing it and uh, calling it as done so I hope you have got an idea about how the whole setup works if you have any further doubts just ask me in the comments below I think I have covered every points of this thing so yeah I think that's it thanks for watching guys see you in another video